I never like crowded places. It's kind of a social anxiety thing. And it took me a while to even figure out that I ha that it, that it was a thing. I didn't know people had that. I just thought I was like, I was weird or something, you know. Kevin, where are we at? Boreal Mountain, USA. Best mountain in the world. I started skateboarding in the fourth grade, let a dude borrow my bike and he let me borrow a skateboard and I was just grinding on the curb in front of my house. I'm like, this is what I'm doing. I thought snowboarding was pretty stupid when I first saw it. It was all neon and like mama socks and snowboarding was like in, in my circle, was, it wasn't cool. Then I saw Cardiel and Salaz snowboarding. Like the pipe was only like six feet deep. There's like side hits, then come up and like butter the butter the deck and come in like revert in it was just so sick and they kind of made like they had always had this like spine thing and cardio would like do these shifties and like backside 180 like pretty much when he hit the snow you know it was just like and it, it was just like changed my life you know it was just like he looked like he was skateboarding on a snowboard and i was like i am all about that so the snowboarding part was easy the the shop tours and the, the meeting people, you know, if you have social anxiety, the idea of going to that scenario is, is scary. If you're like honest about it, like it's, it, you truly have like a fear. It's like, it's almost like bullying. You're having people bully you. They don't know that this is affecting you that way, but it's affecting you. If we'd go to a party and I'd be sitting in the corner, like getting spit on by like three drunk people, like, and no matter what they were talking about, you're still just like, like paralyzed. That stuff was horrible, miserable, painful experience and that you couldn't talk to people about it. They'd be like, oh, you spoiled baby. You know, you don't want to be that guy and you suppress that stuff forever. And then at some point you're just like, you just snap, you know, or you end up in the bottom of like eight Sapporos. Are we rolling in? Rolling in. I'm going to roll in right on this bump right here. Fast forward like four years, I'm on the same team as him. Fast forward like another two years to that, I'm looking in a brochure. My pro model is sitting right next to John Cardiel's pro model. I couldn't believe it, dude. Like I wasn't that guy. I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to be there. Like this isn't real. This isn't supposed to happen. This isn't like a thing that I'm a part of. These guys are gods. The booze thing came in and it worked perfectly for a long time. You know, the social lubricant. And then as things got more uncomfortable, the booze intake would go up, you know? It was too much in my life. It was my medicine. It was my, a way for me to be able to do part of my job because of some social weird, I didn't ask to have that. I just, but it, it just fit perfect, like a key in a lock. I could pre-party four beers and be good. And I could talk to people and I could be that person they wanted me to be there, you know? So it is nice out here. Gary? During the, the serious years, snowboarding was everything. There was no thought that was not snowboarding based, whether it was designing a board or improving a binding, battling to get better product, thinking about tricks in your mind when you go to sleep, stretching with snowboarding in mind, the actual act of snowboarding, traveling to a snowboarding destination. There was no time for anything other than snowboarding basically, which leads to burnout. Uh. I remember talking to somebody, maybe it was Downing, and I go, dude, I'm just I'm like, I'm like suffocating. I like broke down. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I can't. And he's like, just chill out, dude. Like, just film one video part. Why do you got to film two? And w w don't do the exit. And I'm like, I can't. It's all or nothing. Like, I couldn't back down the ladder. And so that turned into like forcing it, showing up drunk to things and just like falling apart, basically. Like my own mind is breaking me from this life that I created for myself. Back then too, it was like, people thought 30 was the magic number. If you were a pro snowboarder after 30, you were breaking barriers. All of a sudden people were really good, like in their mid thirties, and then 40 was like the ultimate barrier. So now it's like, well, I'm, I'm thinking it's 50. And I told you about that story. It's like, what are you gonna do? Be a pro snowboarder at 35? Well, actually, yeah, this is what I do. I put my whole life into this thing. Yeah. All my chips, all my eggs are in this basket. And you of all people are gonna tell me it's over? <laughs> We started this thing. Like, 
we started pro snowboarding. And you're gonna tell me when it ends? I'll tell you when it ends. It ends when you're like the Grateful Dead, like it ends when you die. That's when it ends. There was no sympathy. I, I got called, called spoiled brat like so many times, or fucking spoiled brat, or people were like cussing at me, like get on the fucking plane. And I'm like, whoa, dude, who the fuck are you? I got grounded a few times. I had to go fly down to Billabong, they, like big sit down. They're like, dude, we're. I'm like, fucking fire me, fuck you. And that's when I knew, I'm like, you're going crazy, dude. You need to like chill out. You created this. Now you got to figure out how to get yourself kind of out of it and get life back. Do you really enjoy scaring yourself or, or, or is it a narcissistic thing? Do you enjoy the shots? Do you enjoy the feedback you get from the shots? Or is it just like, are you an adrenaline junkie? Do you enjoy the camaraderie with the people you're with? Or is it just that you're just so pure, you just, you just love the, the feeling, the flow state, you know, bro? I had to figure out what it was. So I grabbed a split board and I grabbed a tent and I just went camping for 40 days. And I would just like go hike a line and I would stop and, and take note on how I felt. I'd be like, is this what you're after? Is this what you like? Is the pure experience of snowboarding what you like? And I'd be sitting there, I'd be hiking up a couloir or something or some face and I'd be like, this is fucking bitching, dude. I'm like, yeah, this is what you like. This is it. It's all quiet. There's nobody around. There's not even anybody to share this experience with. It wasn't an ego thing. It wasn't a money thing. It was that the, in the purest form, snowboarding was the thing that I loved. And I got so far out there that I didn't, I didn't even know if I liked it anymore. No, this is the sickest thing ever. That's why you made it your career. Look at where this is taking you. You're scared, but, it, but like calculated. And, and you've spent your life on something that, that you can actually enjoy. Like it snows and I'm like, I, I, my, my heart is filled with joy. It gives me chills just talking about it. Like I have this thing that's gonna give me as much joy as my legs can handle. That, that was kind of my conclusion to my camping trip was that do it on your own terms and you don't have to answer to anybody. It's not about that anymore. Like you did that, great. Put it in a drawer, be stoked on it, and go do whatever you want to do. That joy comes from putting your mind, body, and soul, for better or worse, into an art form. And all that energy you put into it gets reciprocated back into the form of joy. It doesn't come from the bottom of a bottle or a pill or any of that stuff. You know, It's like the alchemist, you know, that goes around the world, that book. Dude goes around the world and the treasure's in his backyard. It's like, there couldn't be any better metaphor for my life. Like it's always been right here. But then I thought about it and I was talking to Gucci about it. I'm like, man, there's all these things in the Eastern Sierra. He's like, that's where you belong, dude. He's like, go get those things. You know, and the Gooch sort of away with all sorts of stoke and made you want to just like fire up everything immediately. You gotta go get that. That's where you belong. Is it Earth Day? Every day is Earth Day, bruh. Every day is Earth Day, bruh. Touche. Touche. You know, everybody thinks the rock star life, but how many times can you go play a show, hang out with the groupies and, and get wasted? At what point did I do that? And I wanna move on. I, I don't want to play Stairway to Heaven again, you know, I, I want to play some new stuff, but nobody wants to hear it, you know. I don't want to go film a two minute video part with the newest trick in it. I want to go explore the mountains in my backyard. I, like, I, I think we are very critical of ourselves and our selfish lifestyles, but I mean, it, I mean wholesome entertainment, um, inspiration to kids, what's that worth, you know? So I, I, don't, I don't think it's a, a worthless, totally self-centered activity, although it can be. I get DMs all the time, like you're the reason I moved to the mountains and like you're, you're inspiring people. And it's hard for us to think about it. Our ego, like we wanna be humble and it's hard to go there. I like when it all works out and you're getting like multiple clips and stuff, but I, I really like when you, you ride something 
right, you make all the right decisions and you, you climb it right. You find, you find the way in to get to it. Maybe you see it in the distance and you have to figure out how to get there. Yeah. But I see how that could turn people off too. It's, it's definitely not for everybody. Like I understand how people don't, like they just don't dig it. Or maybe I'm just trying to talk myself into it that I like it because. <laughs> I mean, you got the poles, you can point at stuff. Th that's the coolest part. I mean, that's the real reason. Switch double cork, probably into the couloir to Heine set up a rail up there, so. Mm -hmm. This time at the bottom of the cliff instead yeah. of off the top. Because we had a one up at, yeah. probably front side, back side, turn. Back side turn, front side turn. Front side turn, hop. Back side turn, hop. We're going to get some Noah hops in there. And then, pro yeah, some Salazi hops. And then probably a, ee! hey, Pat. Yes. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely. Because I know you're never coming back. <laughs> well, I mean, thanks for the invite, but this looks way different than the Boreal Park. It's like, it's kind of like a total eclipse of the heart. Total eclipse of the heart. You tell me it's wrong and it's right. Total eclipse of the heart. I haven't even gotten started. Wait till I'm stoked, I get really chatty. Tom Burt told me a long time ago, I said, do two turns where you should do one. He said, it just looks better and, it, and, it, and you get more turns. And I was like, oh, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Five, four, three, two, one, drop in. I, I started picking up speed. I'm like, go slow, go slow, go slow. And I got to the crux. That was fine. A minor crux. And then I looked at like arcing a big turn in there and I'm like, one cookie, dude, and you're going flying. It's like, ah, point it. One cookie. How did Pats go? Ground control, this is Major Tom, over. The snow was like a unicorn I once dreamed of. Whenever he galloped, pixie dust flew in the air from Twinkerbell's angel wings. That was a broke who, once I hit the rollover, it turned into unicorns. Uh, leaving a dust cloud of fairy dust. Britney Spears, whoops, I did it again, playing in my mind in slow motion while singing Bonnie Tyler. Turn around, every now and then I get a little bit lonely and I know you're never coming back. If you're inspiring somebody, that's pretty amazing. If they watch a Pat Moore video part and they get off their couch and go to the resort and go get some exercise, that, in my opinion, is just as important as curing cancer. Maybe a little harsh example, but getting kids off the couch is, is hard. I'd say it was well worth the uh, 10 hour hike up here yesterday. <laughs> it's interesting now that people are more receptive of, you know, oh, free riding and riding big mountains is freaking Whoa, cool. Pat! I wonder if lichen will make you trip. I wonder if you ingest like the green lichen and you all of a sudden you're just like, Hey, bro, it's looking pretty cool out here. We'll find out halfway up that couloir. Yeah. Just think like the eons, it's just like slowly the glacier kind of stopped moving because it melted out too much and then thousands of millions of years and then that rock one day was just like, I'm free. <laughs> it's not even freedom. It's knowing that they're there and that you can go out and experience them. Mountains are kind of like the, the great equalizer of, of humans of your own mind of your like you're you're gonna get humbled and that's something that maybe in your everyday life you're not you're not used to being humbled or perpetually humbled is what the mountains do to me and that's okay you come out here and it's just it just is what it is it's gonna be here when i'm gone it's gonna give what it has to give and whether that's good or bad but the thought of not coming to the mountains because you're scared of what might happen in the mountains that that doesn't that doesn't even cross my mind because the thought of not going into the mountains and playing in the mountains and learning from the mountains, it's not even an option. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. <laughs> Hell yeah! Wow, that was fun. 
dude, it, the plumes were just hanging around. They were like three turns, four turns deep. It was incredible, dude. That was awesome. Yes. Semi Hagar. <laughs> Prime time. Yeah. What is it? Earth Day today? <laughs> Earth Day's every day. Let's go, Omar. Semi Hagar. <laughs> Thanks, Kev. Yes. Thank awesome. you for leading that whole thing. That was amazing. Your badge. <laughs> badge. Summit badge. Summit badge. <laughs> But the beautiful part of snowboarding, to become a prime example, is I just like, dude, just work hard. You'll get, you'll be back there. Snowboarding loves their community. They want you in, but you have to show the effort. You can't just be a drunk derelict and complain. And like 18 year old Kevin's talking to 47 year old Kevin going, you turned into a guy that you, you never wanted to be. And 47 year old Kevin's talking to 18 year old Kevin and going, hey dude, take it slow, take it easy. <laughs> yeah. And I would relate it like back to the beginning of snowboarding. Like, dude, you just used to be stoked just going out and this wind lip right here, you make a jump and just do backflips all day. Like that's all you, and that feeling is still there. Man, I feel like a dried apricot. Thanks for making me post hole up that entire face. Well, the, the, it was your, you had to get your badge somehow. <laughs> Plus I'm like 10 years older than you. I mean, but look at your signature you put on that thing. Yeah. I gotta, I'm not gonna take you anywhere anymore if, if you're just gonna ride better than me the whole time. <laughs> oh my God. Epic day out there with my bud, Kev. My new best friend, Patrick. We met at the trailhead. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We've hit that moment where it's go to the car time. I'm out. I'm out, Ski. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> I'm wasting no more time. Here I go again. Here. Yeah. Going down the only road I've ever known. Jake rolled a splifter and he couldn't find his way home. Row, row, row. Kyle made up his mind. No more mushrooms this time. Hey, dude, what are you doing out here? It's dark, you need to go home. It's dark out here, you boys need to be heading on out of here. What point in the mission is this anyway? It's Fortnite where you chase the shadow. <laughs>